Imagine this, I'm a 17 year old kid, I'm in high school, I got my so-called friends that come up to me, they have a large bottle of some colorful Kool-Aid and they say, check this out, it's electric Kool-Aid, you wanna try some? And I say to them, electric Kool-Aid, what do you mean, what's in there? And they say, check it out, just check it out. And I drink a little bit of it and it tasted just like Kool-Aid. And I felt fine and everything was fine and I said, what was in that Kool-Aid and why do you call it electric? And they say, because there's a bunch of acid in there. I'm like, acid? Tell me about that. They said, yeah, it's white lightning acid. We put a couple of little tabs inside there and now it's electrified. That's why it's electric Kool-Aid. And I say, what's gonna happen to me? And they said, just watch. So I took it and I got into an argument with somebody and then I got into a fight with somebody and then I started to feel really funny and my head started going in all different directions. Probably within about 10 minutes, a series of events happened. All of a sudden, I'm sitting in the back of a cop car, a black and white, my hands are cuffed. They don't know that I'm about to go on the biggest trip of my life and I'm taken right to the jail. And they put me in this holding cell. There's a camera on the top of the room. They uncuff me. And in that moment, I'm really feeling it coming on. And the next thing you know, I'm sitting in the cell for the next six hours, trying to stare at the floor, hoping that the camera doesn't see that I'm not well. And I look at the ground and see a bunch of grids on these, uh, on these tiles on the ground and they start looking at me and they turn into faces and they're laughing and the room had all different styles and different ways and shapes and everything and I was in another world. It was like a full world of illusions and thoughts and my thoughts were all over the place. So I'm here to talk to you about today about LSD, hallucinogens, and there's so many different kinds. So what does it feel like? I mean people always wonder like what does it feel like? I have friends that have never tried hallucinogens in their life and they have no clue what it's like. So basically it is an intergalactic mind warp. I think that would be the best way to describe it. You are, you know, you're, you're, you'll see all kinds of things. I've tried, uh, ex and I'm not saying any of this stuff to try to uh, get people to do it. All I can tell you is that something I remember clearly thinking at a very young age that I can't stand my home life. I don't like what's going on in my house. I don't like my parents arguing. I don't, I have these feelings of discomfort. I'm, un, I'm uncomfortable in my own skin. I want to sometimes just peel out of my own skin. And the best way to escape is to put something in my head that'll take me out of right here, right now. And when I was turned on to this LSD and acid for the first time, I couldn't get enough of it. And I remember um, I drank it that night. Then a couple of weeks later, I tried it again. It came in little paper forms and it was like a mini little square about this big and you put it on the tip of your tongue and probably within about 10 minutes to 20 minutes you start to feel it and you just go on a major acid trip you just walk around and everything looks deformed or the shapes of plants and animals and things like that come in all different colors and formations and you look at your parents and they look like they're monsters it's almost like they like you're looking like you're in a movie right like it's everything is is some things are larger than life, some things are just outrageous, your imagination is running, you have these racing thoughts, you hear voices, you see things, it's, it's like a total mind warp, right? So I remember that besides doing acid, uh, I would try to look at myself in the mirror and sometimes I look demonic. Um, I would find myself going to very, I went to Grateful Dead shows, everybody there was on acid, people were selling acid, the whole place was at one big huge trip fest, right? And um, and then I did mushrooms a couple weeks later. When I did the mushrooms, that was a whole other mind warp, right? So it was like, usually we'd get like an eighth or a quarter of mushrooms in the bottom of a bag, and they tasted horrific. I mean, they're just, nothing about them is delicious. Usually we would drink them with orange juice. Um, those are grown underneath cow pastures. So they're, it's fungus that's grown underneath cow poop. And it, it's disgusting. I mean, not only for the simple fact that where it's grown, but the taste and the flavoring of it is like, bleh, ah, like you're just disgusted, right? I remember when I do mushrooms, it was supposed, it was more of a natural like high, but we'd walk through the streets and like you'd see spider webs and things like that, but it would everything would expand. Sometimes you would have these thoughts, I would have these thoughts when I was on uh, hallucinogens where I felt like I could rule the world, or I had all the answers to the world, or everything made sense in this sense because I just figured out all of the secrets that the world uh, held. And so this was like a, a high that I was chasing. It was some, 
something that got me out of right here, right now. I didn't have to deal with things. I remember coming home one night after a three-day binge of just doing a whole bunch of acid and walking the streets, and I, I was like, I turned into a hippie just that weekend, right? So I remember when I got home, I looked at my dad. My dad, again, being the very angry man that he was back then, uh, was mad at me for not doing something, and he was yelling at me. And I just remember just disregarding him, looking at him, and just being like, whatever dude like i don't even want to deal with you right now i'm not in my right mind and i remember going in my room laying down and then the come down of it was the worst because when you start coming down all those racing thoughts are kind of like coming to a halt and i would i remember i would hear my mom's voice in the back of my head saying things like son must you do this to yourself? And that was like, that's the worst. That's like where your acid trip can become a bad acid trip. And that's another thing I want to talk about. Like, there's a lot of people that have acid trips and they think that it's just this spectacular spectacle within your mind and you're all over the world and you're just doing and seeing all kinds of things. But then something could take a drastic turn and you could totally have a bad acid trip and think, oh my God, it's the end of the world. I'm dying. Like, uh, And there's people that do... Uh, very dangerous things like I've uh, heard about people j dump, jumping off of a roof into an empty swimming pool uh, because they were on an acid trip and they weren't in their right mind and they thought there was actually water in the pool because they saw the water they were absolutely convinced of it so um, there was you know a bunch of times that I did acid a bunch of times that I did uh, mushrooms but then there's other kinds of hallucinogens too out there there's things like morning glory which is basically a plant that when you do, you know you the way that some people drink it in the tea, and then when you take that, you hallucinate. You can have a whole different type of trip. Um, you can be with your friend all night long, and you forgot that you were with your friend, and you guys could be on the best trip together. And when you come out of the high, you look at each other and you say, where have you been? And they, they tell you I was here the whole time. And what seems like uh, sometimes was hours and hours could have just been like, you know, 30 minutes. So that's morning glory. Then there's mescaline which is a whole other trip within itself. That's another hallucinogen. Mescaline is, you know, it's a lot of patterns and things like that. And then there's also, um, you know, the world is abstract on mescaline. I remember when, we, when I did that. Then uh, we tried ketamine, which is, uh, ketamine is a cat tranquilizer. And when, the way that we would get it back in the day is we would go down into Mexico and buy it in pharmacies and it came in little capsules and you could take that and it, that it was a liquefied, uh, chemical that we would take and my friend knew how to cook it my friend he wasn't a real friend anyway a person that i knew uh we would take that and cook it inside of an oven and put it on this like like a sheet you know like a metal sheet and then it would like harden and then we would break it up and make a powder substance of it and then we would snort it and when you snort it and you snort ketamine like they call it they, they say that when you go into a k-hole it's a whole other dimension it's like a whole other feeling of life and i remember like being in a room with a lot of people and the room became lopsided and I was on ketamine and I was over in the corner and I, and people, I told everyone, I'm on, I'm on Special K. That was like the, the, the side name for ketamine. We call it Special K. I'm K-ing out right now. I'm, I'm going into a K-hole and I would be like, I'm, I'm like a cat because, you know, we, I knew it was a cat tranquilizer. So like I was like, meow, meow. And I, tur I would like literally think I was turning into a cat. So it was, and the problem with all these type of hallucinogens is you never know what could happen in the moment of being on these? I've literally seen people warp their minds to the point that they, they went over the edge to the point of no return. They didn't come back. They basically mushed their brains. They warped their brains. They got to a point where there just was no turning back because everybody has a different type of chemical compound and makeup in their head. So there's some people that basically just warped their mind. They shot out their brains. And uh, so you never really know when that can happen. It's very dangerous. Um, there's a lot of deadly things that could happen. I remember being at a rave one time and uh, a guy had snorted a bunch of K and he went into full convulsions on the ground. And we tried, you know, luckily, luckily there happened to be a raver there that was an EMT too. And he had a, a stretcher inside of his car and he came and he put the guy on it and like he conducted CPR. But this guy was going into full on convulsions just from doing a bunch of K. He did like this huge line and was on the, he went into a K hole and then he went into, a, you know, like it was, it was bad. It was all kinds of bad. So the problem is, is that kids, even these days are somehow getting their hands on um, the chemicals to make acid, LSD, um, to eat mushrooms, it's still out there. I mean, it's, you know, cows still have 
poop coming out of their butt, and there's people that are still picking these mushrooms from the pastures. So people, you know, they dry them out, they eat them, and they're chasing that high, and they want to go into the other dimension so that they can get out of right here, right now. Now, luckily they're not addictive to the point where you must have them, you must eat them all the time. I think some people, they try them, they experiment with them, and then over a period of time they just, you know, they're over it. They don't want to keep doing it. But then there's some people that, for whatever reason, they may have deep-rooted psychological issues, so that great escape through uh, the use of hallucinogens is like the only way of life. And they, you know, I've seen, it's few and far between. I've seen rare cases of people that have solely gone to treatment because they need to get um, treated for being, you know, on hallucinogens for a long, long, long period of time. And um, before they completely lose their minds, they need to get the help and, and be, you know, address the problem. There's also people that are, you know, kids that are in treatment that a lot of times that um, if they can't get their hands on other drugs, um, they somehow obtain LSD and they use it because it's not always detectable in drug tests. So, you know, these are just little fun facts that I wanted to bring up because kids will do it. You know, there's some kids that, that are out there that they'll take it to another level. There's some kids that like heroin. There's some kids that like opiates. There's some kids that like marijuana. There's some kids that like alcohol. And then there's some kids that just have this whole other mentality where they think, I want the great escape. Like, I want to go to another world. I want, I want to get out of this world and go and try out other stuff and use my imagination in ways that uh, nobody ever has. So with that said, we talked about hallucinogens today. What does it feel like to do hallucinogens? I wouldn't ever wish anyone to try them because it's not always what it's, what it's made up to be. Thanks for letting me share today. Hopefully this video was relatable to you. If you like what you heard today, please subscribe. Uh, this was presented by Beginnings Treatment Centers. We would always like to provide you with more information on different types of addictions and different types of drugs and the feel of what it feels like to be on them.